right, very good morning to you all in wherever you are tuning in to the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. We are the Church of the Good Shepherd Episcopal in Vancouver, Washington, and this is the traditional weekend every October 4th where, where we also include in our worship uh, the memory of the life and the witness of St. Francis of Assisi. And this is a feast day near and dear to my heart. Not only is my mother, my beloved mother, named Francis, my youngest brother is named Francis. So for the two Francises in my life, love you both and think about you guys often back on the East Coast. Hope you're keeping safe. I mean, I know you are, but continue to keep safe in these times we live in. I hope you are doing the same, and I hope part of keeping safe and sane is tuning in regularly every week for this virtual worship, which Taylor just told me this is our 32nd taping. 31st. 31st. We've been in front of this podium and in front of this camera now 31 times. Who would have thought? But we're still standing by the grace of God, and we hope you are too. And so uh, let me just say, since it is St. Francis Sunday, and I traditionally do a blessing of the animals, albeit this year it won't be live, it won't be in person, and I apologize for that, but that's where we are with the virus. I'm going to give a virtual blessing of your pet or your stuffed animal if you're a child or a photograph or a framed picture, if you will, of your beloved pet, which may have already passed over the Rainbow Bridge. I say that now not for you to scramble and to try to find where that picture is or where that dog or cat is. They might be hiding under the bed. But just FYI, I'm going to give a blessing over all your pets at the end of the service. Okay, not now, not in the middle, but at the very end of the service, about an hour from now. Okay. Today, we are joined by Bunny D's, Ken Voss, Joel and Taylor once again in the saddle, and I am especially proud and happy to report that our beloved Bishop Greg Rickle, the bishop, the Episcopal Bishop of the Diocese of Olympia, will be our preacher this Sunday. And indeed, it's October already, and that means traditionally at Good Shepherd, it's Stewardship Month, and I know everybody goes, oh, like that, but no. We've got a great sermon, not only from Bishop Rickle uh, this week, but in the next few weeks to follow from some of your fellow lay people here at the church talking about stewardship and being good stewards of all the gifts that God has given you, not just treasure, but time and talent as well. We need to hear that. We need to be reminded of that. So that's something to look forward to coming up. Okay. Our opening hymn is hymn 448, O oh, Love, How Deep. Thank mm -hmm. you. Lord. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is in on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth you shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy for six days you shall labor and do all of your work Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear fault witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female, slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and the lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, they were afraid, and trembled, and stood a distance, and said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, as we shall die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. declare the glory of God 
and shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. And their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all the lands, and their message to the ends of the world. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be As he set up a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to raw in its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. Let the words of Meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and give light to the eye. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. The fear of the Lord clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the cold. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and redeemer, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be
reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a land owner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slave and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son... They said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. So I chose this Sunday to preach for the diocese, for those who choose, because it was a convenient Sunday, and I had to preach anyway for Christ Church Anacortes, which I am so thankful to be able to do today. And also because I do want to speak to stewardship, and this is a good time to do it. And finally, because I wanted to give our fabulous preachers around this diocese a day off from it, should they choose. Only later did I realize that many of you will be celebrating St. Francis and perhaps the blessing of the animals today. So I do want to tip my hat to that. I think Francis would definitely approve of my premise, probably lived it out literally better than just about anyone ever did, and he had lots to say about that. Hopefully there's something in this for those of you celebrating that today. Certainly that old saying by President Truman about Washington, D.C., if you want a friend in Washington, get a dog, is really true in so many ways in life. If you want a true, unconditional friend in this life, get a pet. So along with many of you, we salute pets, animals, creation, this day, just as much. And to honor Francis even more, I'll tell you a story about him. Some of you have heard me tell it before. I've been very fortunate and blessed to go to Assisi several times. I love going there. In the huge basilica dedicated to him down in the valley below, right in the midst of it is the Porcinkula, the small little chapel, tiny, purported to be the one Francis loved the most and also where he died, just feet from its walls. I read a book before I went the first time where a college history professor took his students and as they stood in that basilica, huge, covering this tiny chapel, the professor began to expound on the difference in Christendom and Christianity. At the end of his talk, going back and forth between Christendom, essentially what we humans tend to do to the church, and Christianity, 
the actual movement set in motion by God and Jesus, he pointed at that huge vaulted ceiling and said, that is Christendom. And then he placed his hand on the perchinkula, that little chapel, and said, but this is Christianity, the skin, the heart. G.K. Chesterton summed this up by saying, it's not that Christianity is all that bad, it's just that no one's ever tried it yet we're thinking about. A few years ago, we had a president of this country, and I do mean another one, not speaking of our president now, who openly declared that this country, our society, was an ownership society. I remember when I heard that the first time, it kind of jolted me, and I sat there wondering why. Why did that affect me so? An ownership society. There's so much about what he said that is really true. We are an ownership society. So much of our worth as humans and our society revolves around and is judged upon what we have, what we own. I'm not saying that's a good thing. In fact, this sermon is going to try to disavow you of it. More than that, I'm not going to try to persuade you that an ownership society is bad or good, but instead that it's simply not us. It's not who we are. And by that, I mean... It's not Christian. Jesus, for sure, if not Christianity also, is not an ownership society, an ownership kingdom, an ownership movement. In fact, if anything, Christianity is the complete opposite. This is the reason that Jesus spoke to money, our possessions in life, the idea of owning anything as suspect and as really a big issue for us, a big issue, as nothing could get in the way of our relationship with God more than our ownership of anything. He speaks of this directly over 60 times in the Gospels, and it's thought to be the one focus and topic he speaks of directly more than any other, save love itself. I believe what he knew full well is what he actually said in one of those moments, that it is impossible for you to be fully devoted to your wealth, what you own, and to God. That you can't fully serve God and your possessions. It's one or the other. Over and over again, in many different ways, he makes this case. And today in this gospel, he makes it again, this time very directly. A landowner, who in this parable most definitely is God, rents out his land to a tenant who in turn seems to forget or not care about the fact that the land he's on is not his. He doesn't own it. Instead, it's owned by someone else, and he's there to benefit from the land, to care for the land, to make a living off that land, but in so doing, always realizing that he doesn't own it and is called instead to be a steward of it. This tenant has not only forgotten all of that, but has even made the huge, emotionally unintelligent leap to, to the belief that he can take the land, make it his, become the owner. Here's the point today. The kingdom of God is not an ownership society, not one bit, not at all. The kingdom Jesus points to in this parable and so many of the parables and stories he uses is that it is exactly the opposite. When you sign up to follow him, just as he bade the disciples, he bids us the same. Leave everything behind, give it all away and follow me. All of it. Jesus came and affirmed what had been Jewish law for centuries, the tithe, 10% of your wealth, of all your profits and harvests of any kind, given back to the community of the faithful, this was required. And he affirmed that. In that same Jewish law and practice came with it the idea that real, true giving, what was known as alms, only started after that 10%. In other words, the tithe, 10% was expected, expected. Still to this day, some synagogues ask their followers to provide their tax return, to set their expected tithe to the synagogue. Alms, true giving, only comes after that. So see, you're getting off pretty light if the tithe is all we're talking about. And I don't know any of church that's asking for your tax returns, although our unwillingness to speak of such things is a sermon for yet another day. But then along comes Jesus, and in this parable, he is the son, sent with the landowner God, believing if he sends his actual son, he will get more respect. The tenant will listen. You see how that goes. We saw how it went when Jesus really did come. God is asking us to listen to Jesus too. And what does Jesus say about all of this? Well, he affirms what I've just said, but he says basically over and over again, directly and in parable, 10% is not good enough. What Jesus knew was this, for this, 
to fully affect, and we might even say infect your soul, you have to give it all away, all of it. You just can't be wed to that as your first priority and also be able to have God and the following of God as your priority too. First, you have to give it all up. How do we do that in this generation? Of course, you can't simply pack all of your things, put them out on the corner, throw down the keys to your house and car, and whatever else, and walk away. Well, I guess you could, but you would be lost here, and you would definitely be needing a lot of help here. I don't think that's what's being asked, literally. No, the world's economy, the world's way, the ownership society we live in is very real. It does exist. It is simply this. For us Christians, it is the world we live in, but it is not any longer our world. That is how monumental a shift Jesus asked for, 100%. It's what Christians vow to when they take on this mantle and this way. So we don't sign over our deeds or walk away from it all, but we do have to get in to our heads, hearts, life, and practice that none of it is ours. We don't believe in the ownership society anymore. We instead live in a stewardship society and we live a stewardship life. Stewardship means caring for all that is in your hands while knowing it is not yours. You don't own anything. You will pass it along to other stewards someday. In essence, in becoming a Christian, you acknowledge that you are the tenant in this parable. You are there to work the land, to care for it, to give it back better than you found it, but to know it never as yours. As I often say in my stewardship workshops, there are no luggage racks on a hearse. It coincides with that old line, you can't take it with you. That's true, and no one ever has passed from this life with anything from this life, and no one ever will. We are called on by Christ to live the stewardship life, which is the life of eternity early. In other words, we're in practice for eternity here and now. That's what it means to be a Christian. There is an old country sermon where the farmer, after a similar sermon to what I'm attempting to preach today, invited the preacher over to his thousand-acre farm and took the preacher out to a high vantage point and said, Look, preacher, look out as far as you can see. That land has been in my family for as long as I can remember. And so I ask you, can you really say I'm not the owner? The preacher looked at him and said, why don't you ask me that in a hundred years, or a thousand, or an eternity? No piece of paper, no history, no human will will ever make you the owner when you're no longer here. We Christians, or many of us, still use the tithe as our baseline. I'm one of those. Currently, my wife and I give away about 16% of our income every year. We've always made sure 10% goes directly to the church. Now that's about 12, the other four going to other causes we believe in. We are always striving to give more because we know and believe the other 84% is not ours either. We are stewards of it. Quite frankly, I have found that way of living to be so life-giving, so liberating, so faithful. I hope you can find the joy and release in it too. My fellow followers of Jesus Christ, we are no longer owners, but instead stewards. May you fully know the freedom and gift of that truth. Beloved, I have said these words to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in, in one, one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God commands us through Christ Jesus to love one another. In baptism, we promise to seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves, and to strive for justice and peace and respect the dignity of every human being. Let us now honor those vows and pray for our nation in this election season for wise and just leaders, and for the needs of others throughout our country and the world. We pray for continued blessings on all peacemakers, on leaders who value peace, and on everyone who promotes nonviolent solutions to conflict. We pray for a speedy end to all violence and warfare around the world. God of peace and gentleness, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the strength of heart and mind to look beyond ourselves and address the needs of our siblings throughout the world, for the rural and urban poor, for the rebuilding of our communities, and for an end to the cycles of violence that threaten our future. God of generosity and compassion, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all nations that they may live in unity, peace, and concord, and that all people may know justice and enjoy the perfect freedom that only God can give. God of liberty and freedom, Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray that the Holy Spirit may embrace the most vulnerable members of our society. We pray also for an end to the growing disparity between the rich and poor, and for the grace and courage to strive for economic justice. God of all gifts and blessings, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for an end to prejudice throughout our country and the world, that we will respect all people as precious children of God, and that racism sexism, and all other forms of discrimination will be forever banished from our hearts, our society, and our laws. God of fellowship and equality, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for a reverence of creation, that we will have the tools and the will to conserve it, that we will use its bountiful resources in the service of others, and that we will become better stewards of all that has been entrusted to us. God of nature and the universe, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all immigrants, refugees, and pilgrims from around the world, that they may be welcomed in our midst and be treated with fairness, dignity, and respect. God of outcasts and wanderers, hear, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the aged, and the infirm, for those with physical or mental disabilities, that all may have access to proper health care, and that God's loving embrace may be felt by all who suffer. God of comfort and healing, hear our prayer. We pray for all prisoners and captives, that a spirit of forgiveness may replace vengeance and retribution and that we, with all the destitute, lonely, and oppressed, may be restored to the fullness of God's grace. God of absolution and mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all children and families, and particularly for the orphaned, 
neglected, abused, and those who live in fear of violence or diseased, that they may be relieved and protected. God of children and families, hear our prayer. We pray for the reconciliation of all people and for the church throughout the world, that it may be an instrument of your healing love. God of outreach and restoration, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died as a result of violence, war, disease, or famine, especially those who died because of human blindness, neglect, or baldness, or hardness of heart. God of eternal life and resurrecting love, yeah. hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Watch over our country now and in the days ahead. Guide our leaders and all who will vote. Guide them in all knowledge and truth and make your ways known among all people. In the passion of debate, give them a quiet spirit. In the complexities of the issues, give them courageous hearts. Accept and fulfill our petitions. We pray not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, but above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, 
out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his friends and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, we remember his, his death, death, we, we proclaim, proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Francis and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. A prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, Lord make, make us, us instruments, instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. couple announcements. Uh, wonderful to make these announcements. They're so they're blessings. They're they're praise reports. I want to give a 
A warm congratulations out there to Nola and Jim Crawford, uh, beloved prisoners here at the Church of the Good Shepherd. Became apparent this week. I learned several others did. Actually, it was announced and alluded to on the Bible study every Wednesday night that we've been doing. So that's a shameless plug there. Jump on that if you don't mind and you don't have to make every week, but uh, we sure would love to have you. Uh, Jim and Nola celebrated 50 years of wedding wedding anniversary. Congratulations to the two of you. Quite an achievement. No small thing. Blessings for health and happiness for many more years together. Also, uh, fellow lay reader, Rob Marsdorf, Swanee boy. Yes, he is. We went to the same school. He went to the undergraduate school. I went to the graduate school, School of Theology. Rob Marsdorf turns 90 years young tomorrow. So happy birthday, Rob. I call him Gandalf. That's an inside joke. But uh, blessings to you, brother, and Susan, and your children, and health and happiness, body, mind, and soul, many more you'll be able to enjoy. And last but not least, another wonderful joy and praise report. Larry and Janice Crumbaker became first-time grandparents the last week or so. So, yes, their son Paul uh, has now a daddy, and they got a beautiful granddaughter. And so, Larry and Janice, we celebrate with you, and we say congratulations as you both now entered into grandparent land. Now, here's a time I want to say a prayer over all your pets. So take a sec while I say something. While I, while I say something, get your stuffed animal if you're a little kiddo, or have your pet right now in your lap or right by your side, or have a picture of your, your beloved pet who's gone over the rainbow bridge. But I would be remiss on the Feast of St. Francis not only to do the blessing of the animals, but also to give a a blessing and a and a and a a shout out, and that's a little bit irreverent, but Francis had a companion, a woman named Claire. And so personally, like I said at the beginning, my mother's Francis. Well, guess what the name of her greyhound is? <laughs> Joel's laughing because him and his wife have a greyhound. Yes, indeed. Mom and dad, their beloved black greyhound is named Claire. And uh, Claire and Francis, really they go together. And so I just want to honor Claire today as well. She has a feast, but anyway. Okay, here is the blessing on your animals. And again, we'll do this next year, God willing, outdoors. Lord, we thank you for these beautiful creatures, dogs and cats and hamsters and guinea pigs and horses and goats, whatever they may be, fish, hermit crabs. We thank you, Lord, for them and the joy and the happiness and the peace that they bring us. So thank you, Lord, for everyone tuning in who has their beloved pet or beloved animal, their beloved stuffed animal, and also a picture of their beloved animal who has gone over the Rainbow Bridge. I want to say on this St. Francis Feast Day, a special blessing upon all the pets out there and their owners. Keep them healthy and strong, keep them virus-free, and give them a long and happy life together. In the name of the Father who created us all, the Son who redeemed us all, and the Holy Spirit who guides and strengthens and encourages us and gives us hope for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Let us sing together our final hymn, hymn 546, Awake My Soul. Demand thy zeal, 
forth now rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.